What's going on, everyone? My name is Under the Radar, and welcome to week number five of the NCP. This is going to be the team builder for Owen and the Miami Mans. Uh, go check him out. Links down in the description below, as always. Uh, I want to start off this week by saying that uh, I'm going to be dropping a handful of mons after this week. The team is going to look very, 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 very different. Um, I'm going to be so not uh, so. Week six, I'm making transactions, and week seven, I'm gonna have transactions going to effect as well. Starting, so week six, I'm gonna be dropping Wigglytuff and Doggo for Exploud and Gardevoir, and then week seven, I'm dropping Gardevoir and Mence for Dragonite and Mimikyu. Uh, reason being, I want to be able to just have fun with these last few weeks because the chances of me making playoffs, I have to win out realistically, which is going to be difficult um, because I'm playing phenomenal players, but I want to have fun most importantly with the mons that I want to be using. Not having fun with Wigglytuff, not having fun with Mints, and I'm not really having the most fun with Doggo because even though I just picked it up like a week ago, I'm struggling to find spots where I can actually bring it and not feel like I'm at a disadvantage for leaving something on my bench that's a broken Pokemon like Zeraora or Zapdos or a Pokemon that I love like Zarude. Zarude is so much fun for me to use, and so because of that, I'm not really liking it that much on this team, but I feel as though I want to draft it again on another team and try to use it a little bit better. But so just keep in mind, you're going to be seeing a lot of changes over the next couple weeks. Just go with it. <laughs> just know that it's for my enjoyment and that's about it. It might make me weaker to certain things. I understand that, but I'm okay with it. So going in, we're looking at uh, <laughs> Owen and now Owen has a lot of Pokemon that are massive threats for my team. And he has a lot of things that I think have to come. Um, he just picked up the hail core for our game. Uh, I don't think he'll bring it though. Uh, big reason why is because I have a Scarf Zapdos, which can always outspeed it. I have a Zara Aura, which threatens it, and he needs a Zara Aura check that is not like just easy to take advantage of. Um, also, Hale does struggle very slightly to get through certain things like Mesprit plus um, Blastoise, potentially if I set up a DD with Mence and he doesn't bring his Ice Shard user and Mamoswine and he only has a Bomb of Snow for Ice Shard, he could be really weak to that depending on uh, hazards and things like that. But overall, his team is very, very weak to Zero Aura. So Zero Aura was the first thing I threw on this team. And I want to give a big shout out to my guys in the front office. Uh, they're really helping me out because I, I am running a little crunched on time with the new job. I had a really big case that I was working on. So I want to give a big shout out to them. They also helped out a lot with this team. But so um, Zero Aura... Plasma Fist, Close Combat, Knock Off, Vol Switch. Super, super easy, super, super standard. Big thing to keep in mind is I need to get this thing in early versus either Corviknight or Milotic. Those are the big two things I need to get it in because every single time he's going to go into Mamoswine and every single time I need to knock off its Choppleberry, which I know it's going to have. It happened in every single one of the mocks. I need to get rid of it so that way I can CC it and I can be done. And then I can just spam Plasma Fist pretty much for free unless he brings a Volt Absorb, Arc Dissolt. Those are the only two scenarios that I'm really uncomfortable with. Now, I feel as though the top six on my layout are the most likely. Primarily, uh, first four broken, really good versus my team. Talonflame, uh, if he's able to get a flame body burn versus my um, versus my Zapdos, it becomes immediately awful versus him. So I could kind of see that, but I could also see him bringing Weezing as a really good fighting resist because if he brings not those two, uh, everything that he would be bringing would either be neutral or weak to fighting, and that is pretty bad. So. I could really see him bringing that. I think he has to bring at least one of those two, and then I could see like Licky Licky Lottie coming as well. But um, Hellcore is there because it came in uh, all three of the mocks that I did. But uh, very, very good Pokemon. Enough speed for Talonflame Speed Creeping Doggo. Next up, we have Choice Scarf Galarian Zapdos. Bray Bird Close Combat Thunder is kicking U turn. Super, super standard. I have enough speed for Urshifu, I think. Um, Big thing to keep in mind with this, if I get rid of the fighting resists that potentially come, this thing also just wins. Um, if he is mirror armor on Corviknight and I go for Thunderous Kick and I get the defense drop on myself, that's also going to give me a defiant boost, meaning that after Stealth Rocks, a Thunderous Kick into a, into a plus two Thunderous Kick has the potential to KO Corviknight, depending on its investment. I need to be careful of competitive Milotic, but that's about it. Aside from that, Pokemon's phenomenal, really good revenge killer. It outspeeds pretty much every bit of his offense, aside from Choice Scarf Latias, which I'm really scared of, 
but my FO was like, nah, it, I don't think it's going to come. I'm really scared of it personally, though. Next up, we have Doggo. Uh, Doggo, I misgenned, <laughs> and I realized this right before the battle, which was great. I wanted to have Accelerox, CC, Thunderfang, and Play Rough. I wanted to have CC because it does more than Stone Edge to his wall core, uh, and it is also just a really good neutral move versus a lot of their team because they're not going to go into something uh, like a Talon Flame on it. They might go into a Weezing, but I can pivot around Weezing pretty well. So uh, I'm Life Orb, just max max. I have enough. Sp I have uh, max to be able to speed tie with Lottie. Uh, Accelerock is really good versus their offense because it takes out Talon Flame both ice Pokemon and then it's also a really good priority move versus um, Mamoswine as well so very very good and then Thunderfang is there because it two shots both Corviknight and Milo uh, nothing else I have can no, no other move that this Pokemon gets is able to two shot both of them uh, unless I'm like banded unless I'm SD which I'm not able to SD versus this team it's just too offensive so I wanted to be able to have Thunderfang potentially make an aggressive play and potentially be able to take out uh, one of his wall cores early on or force a bunch of switches. That's another really big thing. So next up, we have Mesprit. Mesprit is just max max uh, pretty much. Uh, it has a little bit of speed in case he's really fat Mamoswine and has no speed investment at all. Knockoff U-turn does Gleam Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is there because I really need the chip damage on his Ice Mons and Talonflame if I knock off its boots. Uh, I'm able to take two U-turns from Urshifu two U-turns from um, uh, Corviknight. I'm also able to take a two U-turns, or I'm sorry, a Wicked Blow into an Icicle Crash from Mamoswine, as long as it's not banded, which is gonna be Choppleberry. Uh, so I'm able to take a lot of hits and I'm able to dish out a lot of damage. The big one is Dazzling Gleam versus Urshifu. That's single strike, by the way, so it's four times effective. And then if this is another really easy way for me to knock off items on things like the Corviknight, on the Mamoswine, on the Milo, things like that. So I really need this to be able to just take a hit and do a lot of damage back. Next up, we have Life Orb Nidoqueen. I have enough speed for max speed Arctazolt outside of Hail. I have a lot of bulk, but I also have enough special attack investment to be able to two shot um, both my Lotic and Corviknight respectively and I also have a uh, focus blast on there because realistically there is a chance that focus blast just picks up a KO if I click it um, and I typically don't like focus blast but you know what I might need to click it every now and then just really good offensive pressure and since this team is more of an offensive team which is why I'm uncomfortable with it um, like the draft itself is more of an offensive draft and I'm kind of uncomfortable with that uh, I'm just going full out offense I think I need to just put the pedal to the metal and try to take out what I can take out uh, and maybe make a couple calls in the way but next up and the final mod of the team we have Blastoise this is an Assault Vest Blastoise with uh, enough special attack investment with Scald to be able to guarantee two shot Talonflame in case it is a Spadef bulk up Will-O-Wisp set because that set is super annoying I have Dragon Tail, Scald, uh, Flip Turn and Rapid Spin Dragon Tail is there just in case there's something like uh, Iron Defense, Body Press, Corviknight, in case there are Latios with Calm Mind, in case uh, SD Talonflame is a thing, in case Bulk Up Urshifu is a thing. I want to be able to just Dragon Tail it out, and I don't want it to be able to set up on me for free. So, really, really fat. I'm also, this is my main check to, Latio to Latios, so, uh, as well as Haunter if it does come, because I actually do not have a really good Haunter resist. If you look, my Ghost resists are weak to Poison. So I was really, really scared of like Life Orb Gengar or uh, Life Orb Haunter because it also outspeeds a lot of my team. <laughs> like aside from, well, not a lot of it, like one, two, three, four, five members, it doesn't outspeed, but like the rest of it, it can just destroy. And that terrifies me. So I was really scared of that, which is why I wanted flip turn, but I wanted to be able to take advantage of it because this is a way for me to force in my Lotic flip turn out on it, bring in Zero Aura, and then go uh, for the knockoff that I need to go for against the Mammoth Swine. But that is the team I'm bringing. I hope you guys did enjoy. Please make sure to leave a like down below for me. Also, make sure you check out Owen. His links will be down there as well. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the battle. Bye-bye. What's going on, everyone? My name is Under the Radar, and welcome to week number five. Uh, I don't think I said I will be 151, by the way, at Oglebina. Um, this week we're going against uh, Owen. He has a busted Pokemon in Urshifu single strike. So like I could just lose to that, but he also does just lose to Zeraora. Like 
he doesn't really have much of a switch into it. So I'm very, very excited for this game. I'm excited to... I'm I'm excited to hopefully pick up another win. I need it badly. Uh, I already know what six he's bringing. We tell each other before the game just so I can get the layout set up, which uh, big, th big shout out to everybody in the league for being nice and telling me that beforehand to save me time. But um, I'm super nervous. I'm super, super nervous. And I actually didn't change one of the moves that I wanted to change on Zara or on the doggo. Okay. So in all of my mocks, I did play a certain way and it was, uh, and by all of my mocks, I mean all two of them. <laughs> um, it was leading off with Mesprit, getting up rocks immediately because it forces Corby to defog if it has defog. And then after that, um, trying to pivot into my Zera Aura early on in the game. So that way I can knock off Corviknight or uh, Mammoth Swine, I'm sorry. Um, but once I do that, this team is extremely weak to Zero Aura. Um, I pretty much have to sack a Pokemon to the stupid um, Hail Core pretty much every time, but you know, it is what it is. Don't really have much I can do about that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and lock it in. Okay. I need this win. I did well in my mocks. I played smart. I played well. I just need to... I just need to do that here. That's all I need to do. Just need to do that here. I'm, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in the team builder. I probably will now that I'm saying it and I'm recording the team builder after the game, but this will be the one and only time you guys see like in rock dusk because I'm actually dropping it. This is perfect. Um, I kind of want to, so in every single game, I click dazzling gleam first, but I think getting up my rocks is super important here. I'm just going to go for Dazzling Gleam in case he goes for Wicked Blow and doesn't scout Culber for whatever reason. He's going to go for U-Turn. He's going to go into Corviknight, which is big. That's Banded. No, that's a crit. Nice turn one. Urshifu, single strike. U-Turn crit. Forty-five to fifty-four. Mercury, what's this? Corviknight thought so. He has pressure, which is good. It's good to note. I'm gonna get off this dazzling gleam. Does ten percent. He has lefties. That's good. He is fizz death. So, for Urshifu, U-Turn, Crit, put me at 101. Yeah, that's about the roll for that. I'm going to go for uh, Knockoff here. Just to get rid of the lefties. He's probably going to go for U-Turn here. Yep. Which is cool. I didn't go for U-turn there to bring in Zera because I knew that it would just bait in Mammoth Swine and I wouldn't get a chance to click knockoff on it. Pretty much, I need this thing to go down and then to bring in Zera. Went back into this thing. I can live a wicked... No, I can't because he crit me, which is great. I can live a U-turn though, and I can get at my rocks. I'm not even gonna risk it. I'm just gonna go into Blastoise. Yeah, I'm just gonna go into Blastoise. Cause I need to get up rocks, and I think my only way to really get up rocks is uh, versus one of his fat mons, which if he clicks U-turn here, that's a good play. Um, but I think what's going to happen here is he's going to go into his um, his Hail Setter. The crit turn one really threw off a lot of what I could do this game. Like, it threw off a lot of what I could do. Um, I 
However, I'm going to flip turn here. Goes for Giga Drain. He's faster, which is good. Because that means I get the free flip turn into my uh, bird. And I get to click close combat here. What's that Pokemon called? Now I'm going to play a little aggressive here. Now I'm going to go for U-turn. Because I think this is where he's going to go into his Corviknight. And that's when I can drop in my Zero Aura. I can get the knockoff off on... Um... Man, do I do that or do I go into Mesprit? You turned his 50 to 59. If he stays in, I'm going to drop in Mesprit. Now, if he stays in, I'm going to go into Blastoise. I think. He does go for the Ice Shard. Which, that's good damage. Um, Ice Shard does not kill me in any shape, way, or form. Even if he's like max attack adamant, doesn't kill me. And this is where I get at my rocks. And the rocks are really good chip damage for Mamoswine to break Sash if he's Sash instead of Colber, or I'm sorry, Chopple. Um, rocks are really good for the Drake Azult. And... Goes for Giga, that's fine. Okay, so Mesper goes down, but Mesper did the job. Because now that I have rocks up, I'm going to drop in my doggo and show me the switch in. Part of me just wants to go for play rough, because I think play rough kills this. Part of me also wants to go for Thunderfang, but Thunderfang definitely does not kill this. So. You guys want to see a big play? You guys want to see a massive play? He stayed in? What? Why? Why? Oh my god, what? That was so dumb. If he lost this, he lost his hail. That was so dumb. That that should not have happened. That was so dumb. Why would you stay in there? I don't get that. I don't get that play. Why stay in there? Cause like he would he would have lost hail. I don't I don't understand that play whatsoever. I'm just gonna go for sludge wave. I mean, if he sacks this off, like I I don't I don't know what he was doing there. I do not know. Take rocks. It's in range. lefties
What was that play? Man, if I clicked play rough there, that would have forced him into I don't know what. I don't know what that would have forced him into. Bless you. Um. What was that play? Okay. I'm still fine. Believe it or not, I'm still fine, because this is one of the few things that could take multiple close combats. Um, I think I'm going to go for Earth Power here, just in case he goes into the Mammo Swine. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Just in case. Okay, so Need a Queen kills Milo. Man, what was that? So he's going to go into Urshifu here, I think. He's going to go into Urshifu. Mamoswine. Interesting. I kind of do still need this. Hmm. Um. Man, that was... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sack off this and believe it or not... I'm going to sack this off to the combination of Ice Move plus um, Earthquake or just regular Earthquake. That's fine too. And then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to try to clean up with close combat. Man, if I clicked Accelerock there, this game was literally a thousand times easier. Unfortunately, I have to click close combat here. And he's going to be Choppleberry. He's going to live it. And I'm going to be sad. Yup. Literally. Oh my. Guys, I'm really frustrated that he made that play. I'm really frustrated. If I went for Accelerock there, it literally would have... It would have given... It would have taken away his offense. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't understand it. He's going to go for Ice Shard again, and it's going to do so much damage. And I, I lose this game now. God, I'm so frustrated. not what I wanted. I wanted this. And see, the unfortunate part is he can just ice shard me. Uh, wait, what? I mean, I guess he could Brave Bird. Yeah. I just have to Thunderous Kick, kill this thing, and then... Hope he misses an Icicle Crash. That's the only thing I can think of. That's literally the only thing I can think of. Mm. 
Zapdos goes down. I need to ask him what his thought process was on that. I need to... I need to ask him, because... If I Accelerate there and I killed him... Like, this situation wouldn't even be able to happen. He wouldn't be able to revenge kill me with his Ice Mon. But he can revenge kill me with Urshifu, either way. Um... I'm going to go for Focus Blast here. So that way I guaranteed pick up a kill. If I hit. But I'm not going to hit, am I? Oh, I am going to hit. Okay, cool. So we lose 3-0 again. And... I play some games and I play too passive. And I don't make predictions. And I get screwed up for it. Like in my game versus Aquarius in UBL... And then I play too aggressive, and my opponent makes a weird play, and it, it I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I need to, I don't know. I'm just going to click Earth Power here. GG to Owen. Like, he made he made a play that I wasn't expecting, and it won in the game. I don't, I don't really know what else there is to say about that, but GG's to him. <laughs> you know what? Next week, we're, we have transactions that hopefully can let us maybe come back 3-0 loss again and i'm gonna be honest with you guys i'm kind of frustrated so i'm just gonna end the video here before i ramble thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye